I wonder if the microphone's still on. I hope so. Hello, my friends. It's me again, your favorite denture wearer. Sure hope everybody's doing okay today. I want to show you this really quick. This is really cool. Watch this. What's the difference between an apple and an orange? Here's a summary from WordPress.com. They are both round fruits and both can be made into healthy juices. So while apples and oranges are similar in the attributes of shape, fruit, makes juice, type of food, and grows on trees, they are different in the attributes of color, skin texture, and climate. Now that, my friends, was just a tiniest little bit of research. You can just click on a little microphone on your phone and ask Google something and then you can click on that link and it'll give you an entire history of apples and oranges and everything else but you actually have to read it um, <laughs> there's a reason I'm doing this because <laughs> not enough people do research um, too many people throw comments and responses out there to videos and things um, you know comments and responses on a lot of my videos without doing any research at all. In fact, they don't even watch the video, they just read the title and assume what the video is about and then throw a comment out there. And these are not people that generally comment on my channel. So just for them that are watching that like to throw comments out that have nothing to do with the video or don't do any research at all, there's a little microphone on your phone. You can push it and ask Google a question and it'll answer you. You can get on a computer. We are in the information age right now. We are in the information age. There is no reason for ignorance. And what I mean by ignorance, I'm not calling anyone stupid. Ignorance and stupidity are two different things. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge. Stupidity is having the knowledge and not giving a damn. So, that being said, um, you'll notice I cleaned up today. There's two reasons I do that. Years ago, um, <clears throat> 1987, I went to Tucson, Arizona, and it was so freaking hot there that I could not drink enough fluids to stay hydrated. I, I was working outside 110, 115 degree temperatures. I could not keep enough fluids in me. I kept getting dehydrated. Um, and the doctor at that point told me, shave your head, you know, shave your head, you know, wear a hat 90% of the time for the first few weeks, you know, until, you know, take your hat off enough to get some sun on your head until it gets a good tan so it doesn't burn or use SPF 30 tanning lotion. Uh, the problem I had with the tanning lotions was I'd sweat and it would get in my eyes and it would burn. So... Back then, the doctor told me in, in 87, shave your head, you know, get it, you know, wear your hat most of the time, but take it off every now and again, get a little sun on your head every day for a couple of weeks until you get a good tan, until your scalp toughens up to the sun, then you can go without your hat. Reason he told me to do that was because as you perspire on the top of your head, that just the slightest little breeze comes across the top of your head, cools your entire body down. You lose 90% of your body heat out of the top of your head in the winter time. Well, I don't know if it's 90%, but it's close. Um, so it, it goes to, uh, the way the doctor explained it to me back then was, it's like an air conditioner on your head if you shave your scalp in the summertime. It's like an air conditioner, that tiniest little breeze just going across that wet scalp and it cools your entire body down. And he was right, because since I started shaving my head in the summertime for the past 30 years, I've never been dehydrated. Not once. So, there's been a few times where I've tried to stay places in the wintertime that were cold. I normally don't. I normally, you know, for the past five years, well, you guys don't know this because you haven't been on my, I, I mean, I just started my channel three years ago. Um... For four years, I stayed in Colorado, which was unusual for me because normally I would take off, go somewhere south for the winter. Um, but I was managing a campground and doing things up there, and it was a steady job, and it was a steady place to live, and, you know, everything was steady, so I just stayed for the winters. Um, I didn't mind it, but it was cold, and I didn't like the cold that much. 
with that being said, I try to grow my hair in the wintertime because, you know, like I said, you lose body heat out of your top of your head in the wintertime, so I try to grow my hair. Usually start around September, October. By mid-January, I've got such bad dry scalp, no dandruff shampoo, no dry scalp shampoo, nothing will work. And I end up just scratching it raw. So the only cure for that is to shave my head. I could go to a doctor and get a prescription shampoo that would probably cost me, well, first of all, the doctor visit and the tests, the dermatology tests that they have to do. They have to take a skin sample and all that crap. Then they have to prescribe a shampoo for you. Um, I could have went through all that, um, and I did one year. And by the time it was all said and done, I thought, you know what? All I got to do is shave my head. The flakes go away. The dry scalp stops. Dry scalp is caused by dandruff. Dandruff is a condition in, in the dermal layer of the scalp where it damages the cells that hold in moisture. When those cells get damaged, they flake off. That's what dry scalp and dandruff is. It's the flakes. So once that happens, the only, you, know, you can use dry scalp shampoos, dandruff shampoos, things like that. And they work fine for most people. They didn't work for me. So with that being said, I know it's mid-January and it's still cold, but I don't have to work outside. So I'm not worried about losing a whole lot of body heat out of the top of my head. And for the past few years, if you've been watching my channel, I always shave my head in January. I think it's because I'm used to being down south at this time of year, so it's habit but also because I try to grow my hair in the winter time and it gets so, dr so dry and so itchy and so irritating that I end up almost scratching it raw that the only solution for me is to just shave it. So there's a couple of reasons for that. So I didn't have a whole lot to talk about dentures today but I did want to talk about doing a little research. It's not really hard people. Um, by the way, now let me show you this. I don't know if you can see that very clearly or not this is what I picked up about three weeks ago and it clearly says right on the label and right in the instructions will not penetrate the nail so what I'm doing is I've done a test this finger had fungus in it and as you can I've been using that on this finger it says to use it around the cuticle and to use it across the tip of the finger I've been using it on this finger for three weeks no change still looks the same on these two fingers, I tore the nails off, just tore them off, all the way back here to the cuticle. Tore them all the way out from under the cuticle and everything. Reason is, is because I wanted to be able to get this up underneath the cuticle in the blood where the fungus lives. And this right here at the end of the finger is actually the fungus. And fungus is kind of soft. So this will penetrate through the fungus and kill it hopefully and they're looking a lot better. This one on the other hand is still pretty much the same. I still put it around the tip and I still go across the cuticle but nothing's really changing. It's still pretty much staying the same. So if this way works, tearing the nail off and I can grow clear nails then I'll do that to this and a couple of toes that I've got. Um, and I'll fix those too because I'm the kind of person I like to fix my own stuff. Anyway, that's it for today, my friends. I hope you have a great day. Please do a little research. <laughs> it's real simple. Uh, for those of you that have been commenting without watching the videos and commenting just because you see the title of the video or commenting because you think you know everything and you're not willing to do a little research, please do a little research. The rest of you that comment, I love you. You're amazing. Um, those of you that haven't commented yet that are willing to comment, please do because I love comments. Um, I just want the people out there that are throwing random comments out with no research to please do a little research. Oh, and one other thing, if you're going to uh, throw links on my channel, understand that I have to approve it before it'll show up in the comments for everybody else. You will see it as a comment. I have to approve it. So 
for those of you out there that are throwing links on my channel and going to every video and throwing links on that video about a product you're trying to sell or trying to promote your channel because you think you got the greatest channel in the world and you have 10 subscribers and you're posting your link to your channel on every one of my videos thinking you're going to get subscribers that way those links are not going to show up in the comments I will delete them I will block you from the channel I hope everybody has a fantastic day 2019 is going to be a great year I got a couple of new rules <laughs> I hope everybody has a fantastic day keep smiling keep trying and please Never give up.